Hi, for my first video. Um, I didn't fall over this morning, by the way. I did slip and it was really, really slippery there. It's been icy and then it's been a couple of days rain. So ground's very uneven, covered in leaves, nearly went over, saved myself. Um, just goes to show the perils of walking on your own in the middle of nowhere. If I did fall over, I'd be stuck there for a while if I'd hurt myself. So um, good to carry a phone with me. I always carry a phone with me these days because of my stroke and I learned very quickly that if you have a problem and you don't have a phone with you you're in the shit um, and I did have a couple of falls as well not because of my age just because of my stroke and my brain damage in the beginning and I had a little bit of balance issues so I've fallen over a couple of times and it's shock to the system when you're 60 years old and you fall over and hit the ground when you're 20 or even younger you just fall over on the floor and bounce um, so anyway the first video is going to be a sort of introduction into what's coming. I'm going to focus for the first, as Ian, Ian Bray would say, I always go on about it, but it's important to talk about it. So I'm going to focus mainly on this video about my stroke and a friend of mine who's going through the same symptoms to help anyone that's having the same symptoms to help them understand what's going on and hopefully be able to get them to talk to the NHS in a more rounded way to help them in the future. I spoke in my last video a little bit about what's coming and I put a few things underneath. Any links, I'm not going to try to insert them in any way, I just don't have the time to muck about. Any links I talk about today will be below this video, just have a look down below and click the links and work your way through. One disclaimer is I have had a lot of trouble getting into this YouTube channel since I've left it for 10 months. <clears throat> And I think some of my social media links, I couldn't get rid of them or I couldn't work out how to get rid of them. I think I had to go in on my laptop and get rid of it. And so some of the social media links on the YouTube channel itself may be wrong. So if I talk about anything at all about social media links or where to go, always look below the video. I'm not going to bother putting links in the video and everything else. I just don't really, I, to be honest, I can't be asked to sit there and spend hours and hours editing. I don't mind making these videos for a little bit for myself and a little bit for you guys, but I don't want it to take over my life. So anyway, one of the things I want to start off with is journaling. Um, since my stroke and since being caught up in social media, I always wanted to, I come off Facebook, as many of you will know, for about five years. Then I went back on just to reconnect with a few friends and try and sort a few things out with a few friends and use it as a bit of a search engine. It doesn't take long before you get pulled into all the Facebook bollocks and you wanna see what people are doing and watch videos and this, that and the other. And the worst thing about it is it takes your time away and it's very addictive. So I deleted Facebook. Twitter, I don't think it's anything to do with Elon Musk. It was just the way it was going anyway. It's just the most evil, nasty, horrible place I've ever seen. The fake news and the social media platform itself is just useless. In fact, even looking at Google News a little bit like I do since I've left Twitter, it's just as bad. It's just all clickbait, all rubbish, all crap. You can't even find out what's going on anymore. I was speaking to a friend the other day and he asked me how it's going in Ukraine. And I said, I don't know, I haven't got a clue because it's buried now. You can't see it because it's not interesting to the world anymore. It's interesting to me and it's probably interesting to a few of you, but they much rather bombard you with clickbait so that you look at it and you spend money and spend money on an advert than they will do tell you what's going on in Ukraine. They do love negativity, the, the, the media and social media. Um, I have got rid of, as I say, Facebook. I've got rid of Twitter. I looked at Instagram and the trouble with Instagram is I had quite, not a huge account, but I had a, a relevant account with six or 7,000 followers on. So I deleted that. One of the reasons I deleted that is because I was get bombarded with adverts. And even the new accounts I've made, I've got a small personal account which got a few people on it, friends and family, and I still get a little bit of adverts on there. My new street photography account's got about 300 people on there, and I just post street photography stuff on there, and I'm getting a little bit of targeting now, and it's taken a little while. Um, the worst part about that is, that both those accounts, is you go on there to look at your friend's work, and you can't find your friend's work for all the bloody adverts and all the videos and all the junk. And I know a lot of people that just don't use Instagram anymore because it's just videos and everything else. And if you actually look at Instagram's own feed, it's horrendous. It's just 
I don't know, what, what do you want to call it? TikToks, kids doing shit, and, um, and maybe that's what it's for. Maybe that's what it's for. It's actually to target kids and it's to target advertising to kids. So that's what it's for. Anyone that's older, it's a waste of time. I think one of the most important things of the past was Flickr. Now, people will agree or disagree, but a lot of my friends that are started on Flickr are still on Flickr. I've come off Flickr because basically I didn't want to pay 50 quid a year for something I don't use as much as I used to. When Flickr was the only photography medium channel, it was perfect because everybody was there. Then Google Plus started and then Facebook started and this started and that started. And the whole of the photography community fragmented. Instagram brought them back to a certain extent and then everyone got fed up with Instagram and then went to Twitter and went to this and went to that. I had a look at the photo app the other day and I signed up as one of the beta testers. And to be honest with you, it's just so difficult and so non-interactive that I just gave up with it and deleted it and I won't go back to it. And maybe it will become something in the future and I might have missed out. But the trouble is, not everyone, not you or anyone else is going to be on there. We're all over the place now and everywhere. So I'm going to stick to Instagram. I have got a blog, I will put that below. It's the same blog I've always had, Matthew Hart Photography one. And unfortunately that runs out, I think it's 2024 or 2025, the subscription runs out on that, and I'm not paying for that either. I've got rid of lots of subscriptions since I've retired, and I've got, because I'm now I'm on a pension, and one of the subscriptions I got rid of was Adobe. Um, waste of time, I don't use it anymore. I use my iPhone, which I'm recording this on, and I use the iPhone photo editor app, and then some snap steed. That's all I use to edit my photograph now. Don't use anything else. Um, I find that suits me down to the ground that I'm not paying £10 a month subscription. So changing my workflow completely. I am starting to do a lot of art and that helps because of my stroke and I'm starting to do, started a photography again. That all started off thanks to Gareth Thanks. I will thank him now. Um, the only thing I did wrong with Gareth is I gave him, I gave him the wrong Instagram account, it was my personal one. So then I've been having to tell everyone, no, go to the street photography one. So I made the street photography one to go on from that. It's not Gareth's fault, it's my fault, I just gave him the wrong link. So that has inspired me through meeting up with Gareth and a few of my friends to start street photography again. Um, I'm quite surprised how difficult that's been for me. I went out there with my X100 and shot a few images and I went out with my X Pro 2 and shot a few images but everything's changed and I think we have to understand that and I'm going to do a whole video on that. I've just got an XT, XT30, I have to look at it myself. Um, mainly the reason is because it's got a tilting out screen. I will come on to that, I'm not going to talk about that today, I'm going to do a whole video on that and how as we get older or as our photography changes, the way we use the camera changes and we probably need something else to help us and my problem is, is my brain sees an image, but I can't capture it as quick with my X100 or my um, X Pro 2. So this actually helps, helps me and helps, helps me see, visualize and shoot an image a lot quicker. And I'll come on to that at a later date. I have got into journaling. And one of the reasons for journaling is because of my brain damage, I forget things. So I started using one day, I think it is, journal app. Um, I haven't paid for it, it's the free one, because I've got big hopes for iOS 17.2, which is coming out this month, I think, which has got the new Apple Journal app on it. Now, what I wanted to do was incorporate my art and journaling and photography together and do some projects next year. So I bought some of these, I'll just show you these quickly. I bought some of these leather-bound um, journals from India. Um, this is a small one. And this one is for a tree project. Uh, basically, I, I'll go on to about all the pens and that when I talk about journaling properly, but um, I just use the stitch marks here where it left the paper white there to do a few trees. And um, on the next page, I've drawn my first tree, which I'll show you quickly. That one there. Um, the whole idea is to fill that up with trees starting next year. Um, I've, the funny thing about all these, and I will come back to this, I promise you, is every journal you get, I, li I like these leather bound ones, but every journal you get has a different type of paper in it, which is absolutely brilliant. But then every time you pick up a pen to try and write on the paper, it acts differently. From that journal to this journal, this is my, probably my favourite one. It's got the cotton paper in it. 
um, different texture. So basically I'm gonna do a tree journal, um, a travel and art journal and a photography journal. Um, and I'm gonna do all those and start them all next year and see where we go. And I'm sort of gonna combine them digital and analog. So I'm gonna use one of the online journals, like hopefully Apple Journal app, or one day, we'll see how we go. Um, and I'm gonna combine those along with my art. I've started doing a lot of um, black and white sketching, drawings, even color stuff. But mainly I'm getting back into my pen and ink. Um, and I'll come on to all that because there's so much you can see online about it and everyone talks about different pens and fine liners and this that and the other i'm going to go into all that because it's really about how you feel and this is one of the reasons i wanted to get back into doing youtube stuff because actually how you feel works with photography and art and how you use a pen or a paintbrush on a piece of paper and how you learn to use that pen or paintbrush with that type of paper is so important and it's exactly the same photography and it's all a learning curve and you can't skip you can't skip all these steps to suddenly become the best artist in the world you have to learn from the beginning you have to learn how a paintbrush works you have to learn how an ink pen works you have to learn what ink pen or a pen works for you and it's the same with the camera and that's why I think they work really really well together I'm going to come on to that in the future so let's start at the beginning with the stroke situation so I had my stroke in 2018 December. I've actually been recovering since then. I tell people now that I'm better. And as a friend of mine, Jackie said to me, that's the best thing to tell people. The truth is I've got brain damage and I've got quite a large amount of brain damage in my brain. So it does affect me on a daily basis, weekly basis, and it changes. Today could be, today, there you go. So that's just me forgetting though. But um, tomorrow, could be absolutely fine. Today could be a bit like that. And then the next day could be horrendous. And how I will explain that, I'll come on to another video about that. This all sounds a bit jumbled, but that's the way it works in my head at the moment. I can have a good day and I can have a bad day. It's a bit of a roller coaster ride, and unfortunately it's been the same with Jane. Being the girlfriend of someone that's had a stroke or a stroke survivor is really, really difficult. And I think I made another video where I wrote somewhere that one day she said to me, you're not the same person I met. Now that's very upsetting to hear. And I was absolutely devastated when I heard that, but it's true. And I know that um, the forgetfulness and the things like that aren't even the problem. It's the, it's the up and down mood swings, the forgetting things and the thinking you've done things. And it's a nightmare as well. I've got to take quite a lot of tablets a day. And sometimes I forget to take them. It's stupid, they're actually sitting there and I have a procedure in place to make sure I don't forget, but I still forget. I even got an app on my phone to tell me, but trust me, it all goes wrong. Now what happened in the beginning with my stroke is I started getting little sensations. And the little sensations are, and the men will know this and the women probably have never done it, but if you've never done it, any women here watching this, if anyone ever watches it, stick your tongue on a nine volt battery a bit of a used one probably than a new one, but a new one, it doesn't really matter. You get a little tiny tingling electric shock in your tongue. Now that little tingling is the feelings of something going wrong in your brain when you have a stroke later on in life. It was so great that I'd actually stuck my tongue on a nine volt battery as a kid and as an adult. Um, basically, if you've never done it, we used to do it to see if there's any charge in them before we used them. If you get a shock on your tongue, that's obviously okay. It's only nine volts, it won't kill you. The sensation you get through your tongue by putting your tongue on a nine volt battery is the same sensation you get on parts of your body when you're having stroke. Basically this type of stroke is, I've um, had a blockage in my neck and the little bits that were getting blocked and flying off, little blood clots and little bits and pieces of, of plaque inside my um, arteries was flying around my brain. What happens then is that interferes and it, I don't know why, I'm not, a, I'm not a neurosurgeon or anything else, but it gives you the feeling, those little bits flying around give you electric shocks on your body. And it gives you electric shocks on the side of your body that is, that's the bits are flying around. Obviously it's the opposite side of the brain, so I'm finding this a bit difficult to explain. So I would have a feeling of a little electric shock on my forearm and a little electric shock on my wrist, a little electric shock on my fingers, a finger's twitching, a little electric shock on the, my arm, my bicep under my arm, my chest this side, even my leg all the way down. My face would twitch, um, my eye would twitch, my tongue would vibrate, it's like it being an electric shock. 
And I had all this. And I was speaking to my friend the other day, and unfortunately, he's been going through this. I didn't know that. And he went and got an MRI in the end, and they said, well, you've had a stroke, you've been lucky. But they've done nothing for him. And I, I know the police and the NHS, everyone stretched. But the point of fact is, that scared the hell out of me to hear that he was still going through all this, and they've not put him on any medication. They've not scanned his neck to see if he's got a problem. He's not the only person. I know several people, and this whole process of these feelings can be associated with lots of other things around the brain and neurology. I do understand that. But it is an actual warning sign. They say the stroke thing where your face droops and everything else is really important, but trust me, if you start getting these feelings like a nine volt battery on your tongue, on parts of your body, you need to have it investigated. Because the next thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna wake up, you're gonna end up driving down the motorway in your car or your van or something and have a stroke and bloody hit someone and die. And that's the worst case scenario. Or you're gonna have a stroke. Or you're gonna have something go wrong. I had another friend who's had the same sort of symptoms and it turned out he's got um, it was nerve damage on the back of his brain. It's just ridiculous, but it's all neurological. And I said to my friend, if your doctor's not doing anything, you need to go back. And I said, have you been put on blood thinners and um, statins? He said, yes, I've been put on statins, but they didn't agree with me, so I come off of them. But he wasn't on a blood thinner. Now, at the end of the day, he's not had his neck scanned. He's got exactly the same symptoms as I had, even to the fact he's going, this is a bit of a weird one, I don't want to confuse, but I was actually going blind in my right eye, even though it was my right side of my brain that was damaged, and my right side artery was, I think that's right, my right side artery was causing damage to here, which means the right hand eye or left hand side of the body receiving the sensations. I'm confused you, I've confused me. So it is very confusing. But I went blind in my right eye. I lost half my vision in the bottom of my eye. And this was all relevant to what was going on. And it's the same has happened to him. He's getting vibrations in his eyes. He's getting little blackouts in his eyes. It's all the same, it's all relevant. So I wanted to make my first video really, really relevant and important, apart from all the other stuff that I really wanna talk about. I'm not gonna talk about mental health, but not in a mental health way that other people do. I'm gonna talk about mental health because of my brain damage and the way that affects me on a daily basis. I'm going to talk about the art projects, the journal projects, and the things I do to keep busy in retirement. I'm gonna talk about walking in the countryside, taking my dog for a walk, I'll share some of my photographs if I can, and I'll put some from my weekend away at the end of this video. If you're interested in them, let me know below, and then I'll put the sum in again. They're only taken on my iPhone. My street photography is mainly taken on my Fujifilm cameras, and all my landscape stuff is taken on my iPhone because it's the phone I have with me in my pocket. I don't know what they'll look like on YouTube. We'll just have to wait and see. As I say, when my blog runs out, I'll use YouTube to blog, so I'll put some photographs on there. And I find it easier to talk than I do just write things down. But the journaling is gonna help me write again. I've actually been writing with ink pens, doing joined up writing again. I haven't done that since I was at school. I had to learn how to do it, how to, when it's always been back to school to learn how to form A, B, C, D. And I wrote out over and over again. I'm not gonna pull the book out now and show you, but I was doing my A, B, C when joined up. And it, it's absolutely brilliant. I spoke in other videos earlier on, and I will come back to it, about the voice in your head not being you and how that voice in the head stays with you all the time. Trust me, when you've had a serious situation like cancer or a stroke or something else, that voice in the head is one of your biggest problems. And unless you can control that, it is a huge problem. The, one of the good things is photography as therapy as I use it. If I go out and use my camera and take photographs, I just get lost in my photography. That voice in my head doesn't exist because my brain's looking for something that, that's interesting to see and photograph. And when I'm doing my art, I can sit here for three or four hours just drawing a tree or a house or something in pen and ink. And while I'm doing that and focusing on that artwork, my, that voice in my head doesn't exist. When I take my dog out for a walk, I go out for a walk for two hours every morning and that voice doesn't exist. I'm just in my own world walking along enjoying the walk. So this is my first video. It's not that interesting to some people. It's more of an introduction to what's coming. The stroke situation, please, 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 if you have any sensations like a nine volt battery in your mouth, on your arms or in your body, like little tiny electric shocks and little twitches, go and see your doctor or 
see someone, it's really, really important. I was seeing my doctor with this situation for probably six or seven months and I was being told it was migraine until I had my stroke. And then I was still being told, even though I had all the symptoms of a stroke at the time and I tried to explain that to the doctor, they actually didn't believe me. They didn't believe I'd had a stroke because I'd recovered so well so quickly. But then after that, I was having TIAs and I was having more strokes. So I was having 20 to 30 TIAs a day and I was having little mini strokes and that's what's caused more of the brain damage. And because I wasn't being believed, it got worse and worse and worse. I believe I'm probably as well as I will ever get. And when I say well, you cannot see that I have got a problem at all whatsoever. I've got all my arms and legs and everything else. I'm not in a wheelchair. I'm not physically disabled where you can see there's something wrong with me, but I have got significant brain damage. And because you can't see that, you don't know what's wrong with me. It's easier to just leave it like that. I know what's wrong with me. My girlfriend, Jane, definitely knows what's wrong with me. My dog knows what's wrong with me. My dog's always been like a therapy dog. He actually knows and senses when there's something wrong or my brain's doing something it shouldn't be and it's having what you might call a bad day. And he will come and sit on my lap or sit next to me or come closer to me. It's quite really, really weird. He's become almost like a therapy dog, Jake, because he does sense it. He senses a lot of things in Jane now that he never used to sense before as well. So sorry that this video has been a little bit jumbled up. I wanted to try and m not make it jumbled up, but I couldn't bring in all the relevant things I want to talk about in the future until I basically emptied my head of this today. This really was to help anyone that's having stroke symptoms and also give you an introduction of what I'm going to talk about in the future. I'm not too sure whether I'm going to talk about street photography next or journaling. I will try and get another video made later on and get it up. I'm going to not promise to do it, but I'll hope to try and do it this week and get it up before the weekend. Have a great week. Um, pouring down the rain here in Liverpool, but um, it, and it's got cold for a couple of days and then it's brightened up a little bit. I will put a few pictures on at the end of where I went for a walk at the weekend just to see what they look like for me and for you. And I'll see you on Octopi next video. Don't bother liking and subscribing. It's a waste of time. Just watch if you're interested and if you don't, don't. See you later, guys.